Hello everyone, welcome back again to the side-by-side uh, -side tutorial of the optimization problem. Just last session, we already covered a little bit of knapsack problem about how you optimize your reading list during the holiday. So now, what I would like to point out is that the difference between using Excel and using Python. Because a lot of my friends keep asking, well, um, Excel can do whatever I want, so why do I bother using Python? Well, there are a lot of reasons to it actually, and it's actually very nicely put in Isaac Slavit about when you should use Python and when you should use Excel. But one thing for sure, if you see this cartoon, then that actually highlights a little bit hard part about Excel, that if you have a very large and complex kind of like business rules, then it's very easy for you to get messed up in like many different kinds of settings, meaning that if you're playing with a toy, for example, you don't have your toy box to put your things and organize your things. Like you cannot organize your parts, but you kind of need to like mesh it up and put it in a plastic bag. And the next time you want to find something else, then it will be very worrisome for you because you don't know where to look it. Okay. So yeah, so moving on is that the uh, nice things about Excel, first of all, is visual. It's very easy to do, very intuitive. You can always see your data at any given point of time. Um, not much things that you need to do. You can just very interactive. So whatever you do here, summing up, software does it on the spot. You can see the results right away. And the third one is ubiquitous. I mean, well, apart from the fact that um, companies are using it, companies are torturing it. <laughs> in effect because they keep handing on like uh, the Excel sheet they keep passing around to different kind of people and this Excel sheet is done for a program that they need to add on it's like uh, and then they are doing a quick taping and fix so it's like having a, a water balloon and whenever that it spills water then you need to tape it spills water then you need to tape it and then by the end of the day the water balloon doesn't it's no longer exists and it becomes a tape that holds the water, which is very non-study at all. So basically, that's the kind of like feeling that I think Excel should. True, that they do really well, uh, in a very simple business case. But ones that you keep passing on to different generations, different people layer of the business, then they keep using that. It becomes a hell. And I did that for my internship. So, so we created. Uh, we created an answer sheet that actually they duplicate stuff, uh, the business rules, they just put it there and then there are some duplication checks and then they put it there, then duplication, uh, they need to do duplications again, they need to eyeball it for different sheets, different data, and until I come in to automate that. Yay! <laughs> and in the end, they are very happy, they don't have got to spend like so much time doing Excel business rules change. And they can use data sets and using it by program more automated ways, okay, of doing dependency checks. All right, so that's where Python comes in. So why Python comes in is that it has more capacities than the Excel. Well, definitely, if you have one billion of data, Excel's do not are not able to handle it. One billion of books, no way, okay. But Python can do it really well with uh with uh, with programming and uh, intense capacity, and it's also like storage wise, it's also more efficient than Excel because in Python you don't showcase your data all the time, but in Excel you do showcase your data all the time, even though you you might not be concerned with it. Okay, and the second part is the separation of concerns. So imagine if you have complex rules, you want to add on decision variables, you want to add on the Python, um, you want to add on like the constraints. It's very hard in Excel because it's very easy for all of this to get messed up because you don't have a special storage for it. Unless you create another spreadsheet for it, which kind of like go through it. But regardless, if it's a like very complex, there are different kind of constraints and calculations, then it will screw you up. So Python actually does this uh, boxing very nicely. I'm going to show it to you. And the third one, which is why Python is better than Excel, is that it's very easy to combine with other libraries that are managing porting in and porting out of data. So for example, 
let's say after the EXO, you have all of this data, you have all of these data sheets, and the next thing your boss asks you, okay, come up with a, a report of it, or maybe uh, HFS for it because we want to implement it to Hadoop, which is a data file storage system. Then, I mean, EXO is very hard for you to do that. The same thing, if I ask you to pull out some uh, financial data from EXO, then it's, it will be very hard. There are add-ins, but eh, no, not that good compared to Python. So Python, they allow you to just implement it very nicely, do web scraping, do uh, whatever porting in data you want, and just go straight with uh, doing the optimization and porting out data in whatever format you want. Okay? So that is why you should use Excel and compared to Python and vice versa. Right. So just moving on so that it's clearer. Uh, that's the end of my presentation, by the way. So it's clear, let's go straight to like how you do things using Python. Alright. So I've created Python pop here. So pop is basically a library that is in charge of like a linear and integer problem. It has a lot of like solvers that can help you to decide your stuff. So like GRG, nonlinear and uh, simplex is one of them. But anyway, um, Anyway, it has a lot of supports that makes things and can process things way much faster. Okay. All right. So first of all, again, if you have the model, remember the decision variables, the objective functions on, then you can just port them in. So for example, define the LP problem. Then you can just put LP problem and then what is the name of this problem by sellers. This is good if you want to do two S solvers at the same time, three solvers at the same time and so on. Okay, so you can keep like problem one and then problem two and then just change it. For example, uh, buying accessories for book reading. And then you can do it just fine and then like segment it along the way. In Excel, you cannot do this. Sorry, I'm a bit biased. But yeah, good thing, bad things, pros and cons. So you can just run it and there you go. And okay, I'm not going to ask you to code it out one by one here. Because I, I honestly think it's a little bit complicated to do it, like from the start and beginning. But uh, I will definitely try and cover this for my advanced tutorials once you get more convenient with patterns. But now, since that is a basic, so you can just copy paste and change a little bit of concepts. Uh, sorry, the syntax, but the concepts will remain the same, okay? So the second thing that you want to do is that you want to define your decision variables. So there you go, I define it. So X and then for each of the DF clean iterators. So what is DF clean? DF clean is the table like this. Okay. So for each, okay, actually let me just show it to you. Okay, DF clean head. Yeah, so for each of the row like this, like for example, rating one, pages, decision, please. Uh, please make an x0, x1, x2, x3, x4 and deal for how many lengths there are in these uh, data frames. Okay, so basically this is what it's doing and then it gives the uh, category. So if you see here, this makes variables binary because I, deci I decide the low bound and up bound and then the integer. So this is a variable decision uh, constraints. Okay. And it's just as easy to make a binary or integer programming as simple as that. Okay, but this is how you make it into an integer programming. All right. Then after that, you append it to the decision variables. And then we see, oh, we have 82 books. Okay. So these decision variables will then put into the problem. Okay, pop problem. But uh, let's move on first. So after we have the decision variables list, then we create optimization function. So what is optimization? Well, optimization is basically just uh, whether I take x1, x2, the decision, times the rating. So there you go. I, uh, I did the same thing. So I enumerate the decision variables. So if you know decision variables, is x1, x2, x3. Okay. And then afterwards, from this uh, number of x, then times row rating. And then basically what I want to optimize is the total books. So the total books will keep adding on. This is similar to the Excel sheet um, sum product that we did. Basically we are doing the productions here. This is a product. And then we are doing the sum here. Okay. 
and then keep going on and there you go optimization function there and afterwards we want to define the constraint so what is a constraint constraint is basically uh well the total pages that i can read so that would be i have to read less than equals to that so this is the like where you where i get the number here five to six zero zero is the same thing basically hours we read is five pages per hour is 60 so i read like 68 pages per hour is a bit slow yeah so uh Again, this is some product. If you see here, it's formula equals to row pages times schedule. And then I plus equals the formula. So it's a sum product. By the end of the day, I will find that this needs to be less equals to total pages that I can read, which is here. Or you can put equals to whichever one that is uh, fine because by right, let's say I want to read as many pages as I can. But uh, yeah, less equals to is better because I mean, these blocks. I just get lucky because I need works. But um, less equals to is better because there might be some cases that you can fulfill the 3000, for example. So you can run it. Okay. And then after that, if you print the problem, then there you go. You have this, uh, what is this? Objective function. You have this constraint. And you have these variables. All nicely, uh, all nicely segmented. Okay. So if you see here, it's quite easy. Decision variables, optimization function, and constraints. So the next time, for example, that, hey, uh, I want to add more constraints. Like, for example, I want to make sure that my books, 50% of them are in fantasy. Then you can easily insert your code here. 50% of my book is fantasy. So 50% of my book is fantasy. So you can do something like that and then just add on to the... the allocated box or we call this kernel okay then afterwards then what you want to do is choose what software that you want so i want this uh software to be uh pop soft i think there's a by default this software like the simpack solver and afterwards i can just run it so if you see here offset optimization result equals to pop lp status optimal so basically i want to solve it and then this should be optimal status. So we define optimal status is maximized as what we have defined before. Okay, then after that, I find the optimal status solution. So just pop the objective after it's being run. And there you go. It's there. It might be a little bit different from the Excel sheet. Because of the different types of the solver, they might use different kind of algorithms. But regardless, it should be around the same, okay? So after that, we run the LP. After we run the LP, we want to like create another list that sort of like uh, sort by what. So after that, what we do is that we do the we order the results so that we can port it into the DF clean, which is what we have defined. Okay, and you don't need to know about this. It is just like cleaning up so that I can port it in easily. But by the end of the day, this is what you get. So DF clean. Is basically for each book, what is decision or oh, this decision I will not read, but for those which is very good kind of like uh, benchmark. So for rating a little slightly higher, but pages is lower than yeah more likely for me to read. So this is what it will give me, okay. And this does the in a more I think it's a it's a little bit faster, but it will be more apparent if you have more bis complex business rules. Okay, with that, I would like to close and end to this tutorial. So I will share this to GitHub so that you can find it, you can copy paste it, you can play, <coughs> sorry, you can play around with it. And that will be it. So that is the end. This is the end tutorial of my Pandas basic tutorial. The next steps, um, I haven't really planned, but I have some plans going around. I'm asking for feedbacks. So look forward to it. So I will... I will see you soon when that happens. Okay? Bye-bye.